Just real quickly. Yes. The last three times I've been in here, you have made a reference. And so I. Okay. About the suspenders. Yes, once upon a time in the West. Thank you. Ah, and the law. With Henry Fonda. Yeah, do you know what? That is one of the best Westerns is. that has ever been made, and so few people have seen it. Because you've heard what I've come to say. You have said enough. Thank you. That is so true. <laughs> okay, just one second. Let me write this note. Yeah, I All right, Mr. Hernandez, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. All right, when you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? I'll probably say positive. Positive for what? Could everyone please whisper? All right. How often are you using that? No, it has to be. You knew you were coming to court today. So for you to be positive for meth, that means you use knowing you had to be in court today. So again, how often are you using? How often? What does that mean? Three times a week. All right. That's often. That isn't funny. Yes, it is. All right. So we're going to try to get you some help. We're going to do a UA today. And, um, you're going to be taken into custody today, and we're going to try to get you some inpatient treatment, okay? All right. Um, can you UA him, please? Zane Hernandez. All right. So, um, Mr. Hernandez, we're going to um, make sure you have treatment because you using meth that amount of time, it's not going to end well for you. All right. Do you have children? All right. Where are you staying? Are you staying with someone? Your mom? All right. So we'll be sure to make sure that we have your mother's number and, and let her know. And we're going to uh, get an attorney appointed for you before you leave here today. Okay. All right. So we can do the UA. And if you can uh, issue, um, file a motion to revoke. And I'm not doing this as a punishment to you. I'm doing it so that hopefully you will become um, clean and sober because otherwise it's not going to end well. And when you think that using meth three times a week is not a lot, that's a lot. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, if I can see the parties back on Rolag, please. Okay, yeah. Um, is the attorney here for... Uh, thank you, counsel. All right, so we're back on the record in 2022 CR 9351, uh, State of Texas versus Kayla Rolag. And uh, you're still under oath. And could you restate your name, please? Yes, Cynthia Cisneros. All right, and standing in for the state? Uh, Ruben Herrera for the state, Your Honor. All right, counsel, you may proceed. Uh, 
you stated your name. What, what is your uh, profession, occupation? Yes, um, I'm a family-based safety services worker for uh, Child Protective Services. And have you uh, supervised or participated with, with uh, Ms. Kayla? Yes, sir. Um, I have been um, her worker since um, September of 2022, and her case just recently closed here in February. Okay, and can you tell the court uh, how you have interacted with Ms. Kayla and how has she progressed? Sure. So, you know, part of my job is to obviously, you know, go into the home, make sure, you know, things are going well um, with her and her daughter, also to comply with services. So specifically, we had enrolled um, Kayla Rolag into parenting, domestic violence, and random drug screenings. Um, she excelled the whole time. She um, also um, got protective daycare for her child. So that's where she currently is during the day. And then she does reside with um, maternal grandmother and Kayla during the day. Um, but she did really, really well. All drug screens came back negative for all substances. She was compliant in all of her services, received positive feedback from all of her providers. And my time in working with Ms. Rowe, I, I really did not experience any, any negative um, feedback, any negative experiences or anything like that. All right. And are you fully satisfied that uh, she has participated well then? Yes, definitely. As a witness? <laughs> Mrs. Neros, if, uh, does the uh, defendant have uh, a support system in order to help her care for the victim in this case? Yes. And um, is she? Nothing for her to do. Uh, All right. So, how long did you supervise her? Oh, since September of 2022. And, and how so often were you seeing her? I was seeing her about twice a month. All right. And when's the last time she had a drug test? Uh, February of this year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, I, Ms. Kayla would like the court. You state how you reviewed the documentation she so wants to present to the court. Oh, did the world treat you bad? I have no objection to present the uh, state stock or the defense stock. They approved? Yes. Thank you, counsel. And for the record, uh, the court is reviewing uh, certificates that have been offered on behalf of Ms. Rolick by her attorney. that the defendant seems to be making taking some steps in um, all right you all need to whisper in the box some steps in taking responsibility for this matter uh based on the allegations around it shows a gross negligence and the lack of proper judgment um in fact that the defendant did admit to leaving her child uh purposefully um at the home um without checking to see if there was anybody there to supervise uh the, the child um, this resulted in the the victim child being able to escape the residence on her own, being outside in cold temperatures with nothing but a diaper on. Um, based on the allegations, Your Honor, the state would oppose the defendant's application. Um, All right. Is there a reason for the tears? Because what he's just saying is true. <laughs> no, now, I know people want to cry before the court because they want the court to be lenient. But let me just tell you. <clears throat> Tears don't sway the court. I'm just here to listen to facts to see if you've done anything that would justify the court placing you on probation. Okay. 
All right, so that's why you're asking for her to um, go to prison? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And have you, count, um, State, have you had a chance to review her certificates? I did, Your Honor. All right. All right, defense? Yes, Your Honor. And, uh, Your Honor, we're asking that the court consider uh, <laughs> supervision for her. This offense, uh, first of all, uh, the child just wandered away from me. In, in contrast to what counsel says that the child escaped. So it wasn't a matter of escaping. She was just wandered off as children off too. Um, my client had stated, she told the police that she thought that uh, the adults were inside the home and that the child was being taken care of. And it was just a mistake on her part. And I would like for Ms. Rolak to address the court on this issue of abandoning the child. Hi, can you raise your right hand? Do you suddenly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you out? Mm -hmm. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Kayla hey, Rolak. All right, defense. <laughs> and why do you, uh, first of all, uh, was this an honest mistake on your part? and leaving the child yes i would never want to leave my child on purpose i take care of her every day i'm the only person that she's been with every day of her life i i love her and i didn't mean to put her in any harm's way all right somebody want to explain to me the, the crux of this entire situation is some kind of way a two-year-old in a diaper ended up wandering the streets in a diaper only in november and it was cold so, I mean, that's what we need to get to the point of, because in the PSI report, she's blaming the people who CPS has put in charge of helping her supervise the child. That's who she's blaming for her child being out and about, because in the PSI report, it states that guilt was minimized. And in the PSI report, she's stating she thought these other people who CPS put in charge of her child as the person to chaperone or supervise, she's blaming them saying that they were supposed to be there. So somebody explained to me how a two-year-old gets out of a apartment, a residence that's supposedly locked um, or should have been locked. So she was naked, not wearing any clothes because I still, that's how we sleep. She still goes and runs around naked. I usually just, we just got out of diapers. So she usually just wears a underwear, but that's why she was naked and not, and not having any clothes. And I do not blame anyone else. This is my fault. I should have been the one to check if anyone was there. I just, I was just saying that I had thought because um, when I laid down my daughter, my mom and my uncle were still there. So that's the reason why I didn't check. But this is my fault. I am taking full responsibility. Okay, that's, uh, I hope everybody understands. I'm always curious. I have questions. It sounds odd to me, unless. People are living in a mansion and you have the West Wing and the East Wing and people leave and people don't know it. I so understand. I'm just finding it or I just have questions how a child gets left. And I don't even understand how children get left in the car by themselves. But in a home, how does a child get left in a home by themselves if a parent is leaving and other people are there and, and other people see you leave? Nobody thinks, oh, we can't leave because there's a two-year-old here. How does that work? I my so when I laid down my daughter, my mom we all like my mom and I both went into our rooms. That's why I thought that she was there. So I didn't like I didn't hear no door open or close <laughs> and we I hadn't come out of so I didn't I didn't see anybody. I figured my mom was still home because I didn't see anybody out there. So you don't see anybody and you just leave your daughter in a house and you haven't seen anyone. Just because I yeah, just because I thought that my mom was in her room still. Defense, you may continue. Uh, I have no further questions, John. Any questions? Uh, just briefly, yeah. Uh Miss Rolak, uh, how far away is your mother's room from your room? It was like down low. Did you knock at all to check if she was still there? I don't think so. Did you walk around the apartment to confirm that there was any adults present when you, before you left the apartment? I just walked through the living room. Nothing further else. All right. Uh, any other witness defense? No, you're on. 
All right, I want a UA today, then I'll make my decision. All right. So, uh, Ms. Abrams, if I could have a UA on Ms. Rolak, please. Oh, and Caroline, those motions on the uh, bond that goes with that. All right, can I see the parties on Rolag? All right, we're back on the record in 2022 CR 9351, State of Texas versus Kayla Rolag. Court is here. Council. Thank you. All right, we're back on the record in 2022 CR 9351, Kayla Rolag. Um, and the court asked the defendant to do a UA. And I'm very happy to say that the UA was negative. All right. Is there anything else from either side with regards to our UMAP? Nothing from the state of <clears throat> Anything else from the defense? Well, no, I, I have a request, but. What is your request? Uh, she's been on the monitor for five months. We're asking if she can be removed. Oh, she's going to remain on the monitor. All right. Um, so, uh, Ms. Rolex, I wanted to tell you, and, and this is why I always keep an open mind on everything, just reading your history and looking at everything, someone would suggest that you should go to prison. But, um, you know, I always tell people whether you think a judge is going to do something or not. And I would always tell my clients, hey, you know what? We have to give the judge something to suggest you're not going to prison. So don't come in and throw yourself on the mercy of the court and you have done nothing. You understand? So I see that you've done a lot. I see that you completed everything uh, with Child Protective Services. And sometimes Child Protective Services, there are well, they're always overworked and underpaid, but you actually had a good um, caseworker to stay on top of you and make sure that you were doing everything that you were supposed to be doing. And I see that you, during this time, you got your GED, you're enrolled in college, that's great. And to all the children who are out there who always think that the best college to go to is some place that's not at home. Sometimes, you know, the best college is a college uh, that's actually in your city. People always want to go to some other college because they think it's the best college. And I always say the best college is wherever you are if you make it that best college. So I see that you've done that. Uh, you have supervision because you're not living by yourself. Um, I'm going to want you um, to continue to not live by yourself. Now, once you've been on probation for a while, your attorney can always come back and ask the court to reconsider that part. So who are the persons you're um, living with? I live with my mom. Okay. And my daughter. And what's your mom's name? Brenda Marshall. I'm sorry? Brenda Marshall. Brenda Marshall. And I'm assuming your mom wants you to remain with her. Yeah. All right. So this is what uh, the court is going to do. Uh, the court is going to grant your application. And I'm actually going to give you um, deferred adjudication. So four years deferred adjudication. Uh, there's to be a $1,500 fine. That will be probated. Taking consideration, county court cause number 688620. 
691438, night mag number 675530, proof of employment within 30 days. And in this court, if you're on probation here, I don't allow you to be a home health care provider. So there's to be no employment as a home health care provider with minors. 250 hours community service restitution. Uh, those hours will be waived if you provide proof of enrollment in college, which you have. You need to provide that proof to probation today. And for the court to give you a credit for that, you need to take at least nine hours a semester. And I don't allow people to do that thing where they say, oh, here's my nine hours for semester, and then they drop classes. That's expensive. Can I say something? Yes. I actually am going for a pre-major in psychology, and then I want to go to, to I want to go to UTSA. So after these, I'm going to do like, I think around 17 hours a semester because I'm Thank you. See, when I tell people that every semester I would do like 24 hours a semester, people don't believe it, but it can be done. Yeah. All right. So uh, provide uh, uh, proof of enrollment in college with at least nine hours. Um, probation, I'm going to ask for parenting classes. She's already completed those. So you need to provide documentation to that. Okay. She is to reside with uh, Brenda. Marshall. And so it's only you two in the household, right? Mm -hmm. All right. There are to be uh, no adult males in the household residing there. Okay. If something changes, you can let me know. I just found from my experience as a defense attorney on CPS side, what ends up happening is mothers are doing great. And I've had male clients over there too. They're doing great. Then the next thing you know, they end up getting a new partner. They don't vet that par partner appropriate and everything that goes downhill. So that's why I'm putting no adult males. So she's not allowed to reside with any adult males. Uh, probation, I'm going to want field visits once per month. Uh, regular reporting and the field visit can count as uh, her reporting and that field visit is until further notice and we'll do regular UAs. Probation, is there anything else you need? Uh, no, Your Honor. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Um, if I know you said I could take my certificate that I already did parenting class. Yes. Can I still take another one? Because this last one that I took with the San, San Antonio Fatherhood campaign, mm -hmm. I actually learned a lot. And if I could just keep learning because my daughter is getting older. Okay. And also, is there any way that I can get that y'all can help me with like therapy or like getting into counseling? All right. So what I'll do is probation. We'll add parenting classes. And make sure you notate in that the parenting classes were at uh, Ms. Rolex's request. And also, um, do we need a mental health caseload or mental health evaluation probation? What's your mental health evaluation for? All right, we'll do a mental health evaluation for I, referral. I did do that, and she said that I didn't have any like things, but I have a lot of anxiety, and I just deal with a lot of stress and stuff. So that's why I asked for like the therapy or counseling. All right, they'll take care of it. They're, they're going to make it happen. If it doesn't happen, let me know. Okay. I'm here. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. All right. All right. Good luck to you. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Oh, you're welcome. Your Honor. Yes. Did you, <laughs> did you specify? Wait, am I still on house arrest? My oh, with regards to the uh, monitor, 
uh, probation? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, let's keep her on the monitor for two months. If there are no issues, then it can be removed. Uh, GPS park home? Yes. Like can they take my daughter to the park and stuff? Oh, yes, it's it's uh, probation. Just make it uh, tracking. All right. Thank you but you'll so still much. need to let probation know where you're going to be, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, and this is the top copy is for the state. All right. Thank you. Have a great uh, just, day. Oh, thank you. Uh, just remain in the, she needs to remain in the courtroom so probation can go over conditions with her.